String theory requires extra dimensions. That there's more to our universe than just our three spatial dimensions and our one dimension of time. There's an extra, extra set of dimensions, but they're all tiny and curled up on themselves at some incredibly ridiculous tiny scale. And so we just never notice. We don't even notice in our particle colliders because even those don't get small enough. What are the ways that these extra dimensions are curled up? Well, they have a name. The possible ways that the dimensions are curled up are called kalabi yau manifolds, named after the mathematicians who figured it out. How many possible configurations are there? Somewhere around 10 to the 200,000, which is kind of a large number. Which one is ours? We have no idea. Because string theory isn't done, because we don't actually have a string theory, we just have approximation techniques. We don't know how a particular choice of kalabi manifold sets up the vibrations in the strings that give rise to our forces and particles in the universe as we know it. This is a very hard problem in string theory because it's all approximation methods because no one has the final theory. We just don't know. We don't know how to make that connection between the geometry of the curled up dimensions in the physics that we see in our universe. Only one of these arrangements can be our universe or it's hoped that only one of these arrangements can be our universe. But which one is it? String theorists spent years trying to understand and pick and narrow down. And starting about 20 years ago, uh, in the early 2000s, they instead started to argue that, you know what? Maybe instead of string theory just producing one of these, and string theory can't tell us which one of these kalabi yau manifolds it prefers, so maybe it prefers all of them. Maybe every possible kalabi yau manifold is realized, and we just happen to live in one of them. This is a concept of the multiverse, the idea that our universe with our physics and our laws and our, you know, everything we know and love isn't the only one, that there's many, many more out there in some sense. And the landscape is a string theory expression of that concept, where there's this landscape. Each point on the landscape represents a particular choice of kalabi yau manifold, which means there's a certain way the strings vibrate inside that universe, which means there's a certain set of particles and forces and fields and everything else of physics in that universe. And we happen to be somewhere on that landscape, but they all exist. Okay. Why do we live in why do we live in this one? Well the argument goes if you change any of the laws of physics, if you change the electron mass, if you change the strength of gravity, if you change the number of forces, you get a universe that can't host life. Like it appears that the physics of our universe are fine tuned to allow for intelligent life. So the reason we see this set of physics, the reason we see this Kalabi Yau manifold is because if it were a different one, we wouldn't be around to start asking these questions. This is called the anthropic principle. And I'll be very blunt with you. I hate it. I can't stand it. It makes me sad makes me sad. When I first encountered the anthropic principle as applied to string theory, I thought, you've got to be kidding me. This is the pinnacle of decades of work on string theory. The statement that we're here because if the universe was different, we wouldn't be here. A lot of people subscribe to the anthropic. It's fine as a philosophic theory I, I've, or a philosophical statement. I really have no issues with it by itself. But as a 
statement in physics, I have a pretty big problem with it. Because how exactly are we supposed to test the anthropic principle? How are we supposed to subject it to evidence? How are we able to decide if it's right or not? How? How? Even if the landscape is correct, even if that's an accurate de- description of reality, and we happen to be at one point in the landscape, that means that the landscape and string theory hasn't been able to predict anything at all. We just live here because we live here. But I could have just said that without the whole rigmarole of string theory. So what have we been spending all this time on? Feel free to chat about it. I don't like anthropic principle, but feel free to defend it if you feel like it. Love to hear your thoughts. Next week, we'll keep going with our exploration of string theory. And perhaps one of the most important tools that have come out of string theory over the past few years. But please go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter. It's how I keep these episodes going. And like, share, and subscribe. And I'll, uh, I'll see you on the landscape.